Well, well, well. Would you look at the friends list? I think it's gotten even bigger since I last saw it. I'm pretty sure it's at about that many people. Anyways, that's not what we're here to talk about today. What's up, guys? Pop Eagle is back in the nest, and welcome back to Stormbound. And in today's Stormbound video, I'm not actually going to be playing anything, but instead, I'm going to be giving my thoughts and ideas on the new announced dragon cards and changes that have been um, announced for dragons. So, um, let's head over there right now and check it out. Okay, so here we are on the Congregate Forum page. Now, obviously, as it's titled Dragon Update here, uh, Arano has posted this message. New cards. A year ago, the first set of dragons entered Stormbound, and a few new ones will be joining us in a couple of weeks. An epic dragon will be added to each of the kingdoms, and all of them are named after people active within the community. All of these cards are still in development, so these values are subject to change. We would love to hear what you think about these cards, as I'm doing right now. Any feedback sh can be shared on this topic, or join our Discord link here, which has a channel specifically to discuss these cards, where you can talk with other players, or me, uh, that being Arano. So, let's start off by looking at some of the art. Now, this Frost one seems really cool. It looks like, um, I don't know, it looks a little bit like Broken Earth Drake's with a little bit of Rhymeling influence mixed in there, and he's uh, barfing out some ice. Okay, cool. Now, this next guy, he has the satyr horns, and I'm not sure if he's red or green. Colorblind sort of does that to you, but I'm assuming he's green because he's a satyr. Looks pretty cool. He's curled up in a ball, and maybe he's got, I don't know if those are two eyes, maybe like a gemstone on the head. Pretty cool. Got some very nasty-looking fangs there. wonder what he's going to do. Now, this guy... Definitely ironclad, has the rat ears, telltale signed, has a little arrow in the head, so uh, arrow in the head and an arrow in the side, so strong dragon. And I really like this fire design going around at the bottom here. Really cool. It's also got spikes coming off. I think this guy's the coolest looking one. And then the Shadow Fen dude literally looks like a baby Cordia spitting out a leaf. So I'm assuming that one's gonna have to do with poison. Now let's see if we're correct. So there we go. Winter patch, so that's this guy. Uh Yowling Weavers is Named after Ayanami. Okay. Uh, three mana, five strength, and one movement. I'm assuming this is at level one, by the way. When attacking, randomly destroy a friendly non-dragon unit. Hmm. So. Alright. So basically what it's saying is it's like a super, super aggressive version of Destructobots, basically. Now, now we have the same problem again with the dragons uh, when they don't affect each other. So, this card, you could literally just make an entire deck of dragons and spells and then simply never have this negative effect activate, which is the biggest problem with dragons in the first place. So, I'm really not hyped for this. This is like a super buff version of Westwind Sailors. I think they're not really seeing the big problem with dragons is that they work too well together. They are the best synergy card by far. Now, Storm of the East here. Dreadful Keepers after Kep. 3 mana, 3 strength, and 0 movement. So on death, randomly spawn a 3 strength dragon on a tile bordering a friendly dragon. A cheap and good dragon body with the potential to respawn and keep control over the board. Okay, so basically this seems very very similar to finite loopers if they could teleport a little bit so once again this this is gonna combine very very well with what is it what do they have wandering worms because wandering worms spawn extra dragons and these guys if they die they respawn next to a friendly dragon so that's pretty awesome i'm gonna say um and it's sort of like a budget army if you guys can see where I'm coming from because basically it has the, the exact same mana and strength except zero movement obviously but the respawn ability which is basically putting it back into your hand I think this one can be cool I can see some very good plays off of this and I am wondering if maybe at like the level 5 version it actually can respawn twice which would be very very strong don't get me wrong but it would be very very cool as well and now we have the ironclad union one embers of chaos after m came uh, four mana, one strength, one movement. 
If bordering the enemy base when it dies, randomly spawns a 6 strength dragon at the enemy base. A delayed threat, though weak at first, if played at the enemy base, this could turn to a much bigger problem. If there only was a way to push it forward. This seems very, 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 very broken. Now, if you notice, it's ironclad. And if you'll notice again, they added the sound drivers into the game. So the negative, once again, the negative effect of this doesn't even exist. It moves one anyway, so it takes no skill to have it walk into the base. You can literally just have the base line up. Yeah, so what I'm thinking is, even if you have it all the way back, like at the beginning of the game, and you get your sound drivers, push them all the way up to the enemy base, nothing they can do about it. There's a six strength dragon on the baseline, and your front line is all the way up there. And that's at level one. Yeah, uh, that, that one seems very, very dangerous and not negative at all. I mean, what, so, the potential negative is that it's not very strong unless it's at the enemy base. But even so, with things like spare dragonlings, that, that's no problem. You can buff that up easy. Or like Potion of Growth, Kindred's Grace even. All of those things can really fix this problem. And then everybody includes sound drivers in their deck. I haven't even used them yet, but I'm pretty sure they're two or three mana. Uh, they'd be used against me, and I know how they work. This, yeah, I don't like this. And even if you can't use it on the turn, just replace it. It's it's very easy to just replace it. Now, Tribes of Shadowfen. We have Sunbeam Serpent after Sunny. Five mana, two strength, one movement on play. Gain strength of the strongest bordering friendly dragon. Gain? Don't we mean drain? Nope, it copies the strength and adds it to its own. Very good if you manage to buff your dragons. Manage to buff your dragons? Okay, this is going to come off as a little bit annoyed or maybe hostile, but have you played the game recently? Do you know how dangerous suitors function? Okay, now I do see these some other changes, so I'll save my most hostile comments for then when I read them and see what they did. But the Dangerous Suitors plus Ludic Matriarchs, and that can fit into any faction. So Dangerous Suitors plus Ludic Matriarchs and Spare Dragonling, right? That's the classic combo. You have 8 mana, spawn the Spare Dragonling, Ludic Matriarch. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 dragons. Dangerous Suitors, depending on level, I'm going for an average level of 3 because that's mostly what I face. They gain 3 strength per dragon. So 3 times 8 is 24 plus the three that they start out with i think at level three so 27 then if you just play this dude you get a second 27 strength card what about that seems balanced and if you have enough mana to really get cheeky with it you could play a kindred's grace with the dangerous suitors on the following turn after you do ludic matrix plus spare dragonling and what can your opponent do what can they do they could spawn Bladestorm? Who uses Bladestorm? The last time I saw Bladestorm was probably last season in like Silver 5. And that was a level 5 Bladestorm. And I still beat him because level 5 Bladestorm is bad. I don't get it. I don't get it. This Sunbeam Serpent seems really strong. All of these dragons seem really strong except for the Swarm one. I, I don't like this. Alright, let's look at some other changes. Conflicted Drake's decreased strength by 1. I don't really think that was a problem. I, I okay that's that's fine increase mana by two and strength by one so now they cost seven instead of five okay so dangerous suitors increase mana by two and strength by one fine they cost seven now okay so it's a it's a slower build definitely till the ludic matriarchs plus spare dragon lane dangerous suitors combo but even so that's still not gonna really stop them because at the time that you can do the Spare Dragonling Ludic Matriarch combo, you can already spawn the Dangerous Suitors even if they're at 7 mana. Uh, I don't really think this is going to do anything to them in total. It's going to remain about the same. Now, Beast of Terror, increased strength by 1 and decreased ability by 1. Okay, fine. I can see that. Um, I think that will help. It will just reduce their overall just shock damage of dealing damage to everything. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. 
All right, Spellbinders of Ana, decreased abilities by one. I don't think that was needed at all. Now, Zuri Lord of Life, decreased strength by one. Once again, I don't really see any power coming from Zuri in the ranks that I've achieved. I've achieved up to gold four, I think. Eloth the Ignited, decreased strength by one. Once again, same thing here. I don't, like, that doesn't seem like something that was needed. Now, Broodmother Cordia, I think that was required. She's still so strong because those nests are very powerful. And then Bladestorm will deal fixed 2 damage at level 3, 3 damage at level 5. That could be better or worse because the old level 5 Bladestorm did 2 to 5 damage at level 5. And the possibility to deal 5 damage to everything on the board, yeah, that's very threatening. Now it's with that, what's it called? Now with that... Just a straight three. I don't know if that's better or worse. Obviously, it's more calm, less RNG based. But that's part of what I think makes the game exciting. A little bit of RNG, you know. You don't know what's going to happen exactly. All right. So, you heard my thoughts. I don't like these new dragons at all, except for Dreadful Keepers. Well, see, the thing is, I like them, but they're just because they're so powerful. And I don't like to abuse the meta. All they're doing is reinforcing these guys, like to the nth power like it's insane i don't i don't think this is warranted at all they should have added maybe like a knight hero or a pirate hero some new knight or pirate cards maybe uh maybe some more miscellaneous cards to add to neutral some cool effect cards maybe a defensive trigger there are lots of things that could have made this game better and i don't think we needed more dragons uh, yeah this is in my opinion this is not good for the future of stormbound but we'll see. I'll be sure to stockpile some coins and get these new cards and try them out for myself. I don't want to make any prejudices before they've already been out or have been balanced, as he said in the beginning. So you got to give it a fair chance, and I guess we'll see what happens. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like. It'd be cool if you'd leave a comment. It would be super if you'd subscribe. See you guys next time.